Welcome everyone to this week's episode of Dads on Wrestling. I am Jeff Meacham. No gimmicks needed. No catchphrase. No nickname. There we go. No nickname needed. That's what I was. No nickname needed. And I'm the renegade of wrestling, J.J. Williams. Just take a sip of this tasty beverage because water is good for you. Water is good for you. And we are back with another non-topical but... More of a not a current event. Not current topical. event. Just, yeah, All of our shows have topic, but it's not current. Event. Okay. All right. All right. Current, current topics not needed here. We are needed here, but they're not necessary all the time. How about yeah. that? There we go. We are going to talk about our favorite and some of the best feuds in the history of sports entertainment, and professional wrestling, whatever you want to call this crazy business. And yeah, we got some of these suggestions. Ironically, they were suggested to. RSI to be top yes. tens, yeah. but after much consulting and conversating with all parties at hand, you know, the mm -hmm. two executive producers and then Jeff and Jade, the hosts of RSI, Jade felt that she couldn't really give a good opinion on a couple of these topics, so we decided to steal them for that. So yeah, that's where we got them. At the end of the day, you know, Jade has been watching, seriously watching now for... Six years? Seven years now, almost. Seven, okay. And, you know, all time of wrestling does not go back to the C-Nation era. Yeah. Beginning. It goes back to, you know... The gotchas <laughs> and the yeah, fezzes. Yeah, yeah and the and gods. Yeah, seriously. So, you know, to go back a hundred years and only cover the last seven, mm. you know, it's not, the, it, it, it's not good for... It's not good for the show, as far as, you know, she, she, she doesn't want to come off as non-informed. So, so it's, we stole these. We stole these ideas exactly. So well, granted, granted, I've only been watching you know maybe an additional five years longer than her, but you know homework but, and research has served me well. Exactly. So when you talk about wrestling feuds, and you talk about the history of the business, the the one that has to come to mind the most is the one that's not storyline: the WWF versus WCW. That ruled wrestling for almost a decade. Yeah, definitely six years, almost, and almost a decade. Because you figure Ted Turner bought Jim Crockett Promotions in 1988, but even before that, they were the last two real powerhouses as far mm -hmm. as the as far as the nationwide <clears throat> programs were concerned. You had, you know, WCW, the NWA territory in mid and uh, Mid Atlantic, mm -hmm. and you had the WWF. Those guys feuded from the mid '80s up until March 23rd, 2001. Yeah. But let's be real. That feud ended in '99. <laughs> yeah. Because the WWF got their WWF got their last victory in October of '98, and the WWF never looked back. And the WWF got their victory that because they showed a replay of the Diamond Dallas Page Goldberg match from Halloween Havoc because a lot of people didn't get to see that match because there was a cable bust up. And that was, that was it. That was it. Even on the Rise of Fall WCW, they talked about that. Some people had to get refunded for that because of the mess up. That that was the true beginning and the end. And the finger poke of doom, and the Russo booking, and the Bischoff Russo together booking, and all that stuff. And the Arquette World Champion. Yes, but before that, Bischoff took an idea from Japan of a leading group of invaders. And out of it came the NWO. New, new, new World Order. That's it. Wow. 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 And that changed wrestling. Yes, it really did. As did the the start of the Monday Night Wars period. September 95 with WCW Monday Nitro being launched. Because Bischoff had the idea, Turner had the balls, to go head-to-head... -head with the WWF, and it worked. Mm -hmm. It worked for over almost two years. Yeah. They rule in the ratings. Nitro beat Raw 83 weeks in a row. Yes. 82, 84, as, whatever it as, was. As Bischoff is so fond of telling us. Yes. Yes. That is his claim to fame. Yep. Nitro beat Raw 80-something weeks in a row, a year and, you know, 20 weeks. You know, you can't... 30 weeks, excuse me. You can't you can't beat that with a stick. Yeah. You had that, but in the terms of storyline feuds, yes. you had WCW versus NWO within WCW. 
which, you know, again... You have pretty much the NWO versus the world. Yeah, seriously. Yeah, very true. You know, Hall and Nash came in as the Outsiders and just caused a ruckus. Promised a third member. No one dreamed that Hulk Hogan would turn his back on his Hulkamaniacs. And there he was in July 96, Bash to the Beach, dropping a leg on his brother, Macho Man. And off the races they went, man. And that's why I have a hard time, you know, accepting the fact that WWE won't turn Cena. Everyone says, oh, Cena makes too much money for the company on merchandise. He'll never turn heel. Hogan made a ton of money for WCW on the merchandise. He turned heel and made them even more money. You want any proof that the ultimate good guy turning heel can work, Exhibit A, Hulk Hogan joins the NWO. They were booing him anyway. They, they, They're and, booing Cena anyway! I know, I know. That's my point! They were booing Hogan anyway. WCW gave him a reason to. Exactly! Same. And he still made him money. Yep. They have anti Cena shirts out there now. John knows about them. He's destroying them left and right. <laughs> you know... Brett versus Sean. Brett, oh, For God's sake, they made a freaking DVD out of it. We watched that. I watched it twice. Much to his chagrin. I've uh, seen it twice now. Yeah. And I'm oh, going to watch it again. Uh, I, might, I might put it on after we're done filming this. I'm getting the look of doom from Jade off camera she here. Got but I, she got but tutorial. I just She's might good. do that. Yeah, seriously, because we I, I, I want to watch the, the, the second and third disc, too. I don't those care about the matches. I've I, seen those. I haven't seen all of them. I have seen those. I don't think I've seen all of But the, the first disc, oh my god. And the feud that led to that creation. Holy yes. crap. You talk about personal, deep hatred. These guys did not talk for 12 years years because of what happened that night in Montreal. Is that where it was? I think so. I think so. Freaking Canucks, man. Seriously. Well, to be fair, freaking Canadians. Wrong, wrong same team. difference. Wrong team. Same difference. I, I, I'm just making a bad NHL joke. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. From the get, there was a professional rivalry. Yes. Got friendly Go, competition. Goes back to the Rockers and the Heart Foundation. Yep. Friendly competition, don't get it wrong, mm -hmm. but it turned into a very, very deep personal issue. Yes, it did. And it got ugly quickly. Quick. So much that, you know, they were... The, the great rematch from WrestleMania 12 happened in the locker room in July 97 in Hartford. And Sean lost part of his hair. Yeah. Yeah. Not a good day. And then the other rematch happened in Montreal. And we all know what happened, happened in Montreal. They haven't hidden that match on DVD. No. You know, it's kind of like they hide other matches. Yeah. Actually, it is on DVD. Okay. The Best of Confidential, Volume 1. I know. It's the only time you see that DVD on the DVD so far, because they haven't released Survivor Series Best of yet, or Survivor Series History yet. But when they do, it'll be out there. Yep. But that whole match from Sean and DX's walk to the curtain... All the way to Sean going through the curtain with the belt is on the Best of Confidential. If you don't have that and you want to see the match, bell to bell, blow to blow, Amazon.com. Amazon.com, because you can't find WWE.com anymore. Or eBay. Or eBay. And plus, the DVD is, is freaking awesome. Yes. It should have been, volu been more volumes than one. It really should have, but Confidential was a short lived show. Confidential should have stayed on the air. If Gene didn't want to do it, fine. I'll host the damn show, seriously. Maybe I'll bring it back on the WWE Network. Bring it back. We are putting the ideas into the heads of the powers that be. Bring Confidential back on the WWE Network. It will restore Confidential. Oh, yeah. They use the Jedi mind trick. Absolutely. You will restore the WWE Confidential, the television program. With you, will re host. you will re-release the Randy Orton DVD with a certain match included that was omitted the first time. You will reinstate his existence, period. You will reinstate the Viasis of WF Championship reign. <laughs> you will bring back the Wee Deagle and get rid of the spinnerbell. You will get us back on topic. 
Everybody got top. Yeah, there we go. go. He did. Yeah, it worked. We're talking about Sean Brett, how about the Sean Austin feud? Oh, yeah. Leading into WrestleMania 14, you know, we talked about. I would. I we would, talked briefly about it a couple weeks ago when we talked about Tyson going to the Hall of Fame. Yes, I would give that feud more of a spot on the list if it went longer, because it was only from the Rumble to Mania. They did have a brief little little snippet in Summer 97 when they were tag champions and they faced each other at the King of the Ring, which, oh my god. I, we talked about this when we were watching the King of the Ring DVD. If they'd have been in that shape for WrestleMania, OMF and G would that match have been sick. Right. I mean, Sean gutted it out of WrestleMania. It was a great match. Well, you're but, right. The feud didn't go as long as it could have, but I think it went just long enough to give that change into the guard that mm -hmm. the WWE needed at the time which is why I would put it in the great feud category. Okay. The greatest feuds of all time don't have to last an eternity. No. They don't have to be, you know, your Rock Triple H's or your Sean's and Brett's, you know, or your Hogan's and Flair's yeah. that never seem to end. Yeah. They're freaking like, freaking like the never ending story over here. Yeah. yeah. You can have a great feud that only lasts a couple months. And then you have feuds like Austin McMahon yes. that go for years. Again, like I said, you don't need they don't all need to be never ending. No, this but this is Austin, a great one that did go for a while that was great. Yes. But you know yes. Austin McMahon had so many ups and downs, lefts and rights, twists and turns. That it was it was in my opinion and I'll go on record right now, okay. the greatest feud storyline feud of all time. Really? Yes. Greater feud than Brett and Sean? Yes. But mo mo mainly because Brett and Sean was partially uh, real. Okay. Storyline only feud was complete was complete scripted. storyline because they were buddies. Okay. You know, but if you want to go, if you want to go all time greatest feud period, Brett Sean. Okay. But storyline driven exclusive, Austin McMahon. Okay. Yes, there's Austin Rock. Yes, there's Triple H Rock. Both of which are tremendous feuds. And I will give the Rock. I'll give the devil his due. The Rock generated two great feuds there with Stone Cold Steve Austin with Triple H in different times. And sometimes overlapping, really. Um, That's why I'd kind of like to see a Rock Triple H greatest rivalry this. Oh, it'll happen. And an another great rivalry that has surfaced in the last year and a half, two years, which I'll give credit to as well, which is partially in real life, partially in storyline, is The Rock and John Cena. I do not like the fact that The Rock is coming back for this one payday and then more than likely leaving again for all time. But You've made that more than that. I, I have. But the way they have built this feud ever since John started talking smack about The Rock on in interviews, it's been freaking epic. And WrestleMania, it probably will sell out eventually. The buy rate's going to be freaking off the chart, I'm sure. Especially with the fact we're probably going to get Chris Jericho and Cena Punk and we're going to get... You know, Money in the Bank probably was stored to the pay-per-view, which is freaking a great idea. Um, Rock and Cena has been built up very well. Rock and Hogan. As, yeah. shor as short as it was, and you talk about short feeds with Austin yeah. and uh, Michaels, Hogan Rock, for what it was, it was only a month. It really Actually, was. it was a year, because you had the rematch Well, February the year before the next meeting. Well, the actual... Build for WrestleMania 18 was from No Way Out the yes, day after that until was WrestleMania, month. and really didn't get the renewing of the rivalry until January of 03 when, when Hogan was brought back and Vince like, okay, you're gonna face The Rock, and all of a sudden The Rock comes on the screen and he's the bad guy. We're like, hey, you 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 talking smack, which you do, but you no. And we got the Montreal Screwjob version two. Yes. Version 2.0. Um, you had that. You have Hogan Flair. You mentioned Hogan Flair, which was the never-ending story. <laughs> you know, it never ever truly got resolved. No. Ever. Still to this day, it hasn't been resolved, no. and it never will now because Hogan's back is to beyond Fubar to get in the ring. Never say never. I'm pro wrestling. I'm saying never. You really don't think that if Vince McMahon dangled a money bag in front of Hogan's face for one more match. Possibly at something historic like WrestleMania 30. He wouldn't say that. 
the only way I could see Hogan Flair working at WrestleMania is if they get a DeLorean, go back to 1992, and wrestle them. That can't happen, unfortunately. I know. Dr. Dr. Emmett L. Brown does not exist in real life, unfortunately. So are you saying 2015 we're not going to see like the Jaws thing come out of the movies? We're, we're not going to see the flying cars in three years? Is the world really going to end this year, dude? Are, are, we, are, are, are we in trouble? It's all movies. Ah, it's all movies. Because truthfully speaking, if the world was going to end, it would have ended back in 1999 when Terminator pro- prophesied Judgment Day. True. We still wouldn't be here. I, I wouldn't have had my own career in wrestling, period. There you go. Well, um, the last thing we would have seen was... Jericho and China as Conor Kyle champions. Mm. <laughs> anyway. Those and the cat's boobs. That was two weeks before. Two whole weeks to marinate on that. Well, only two weeks, though. Yeah. Damn it. That would have been sad. Talked about Flair and Hogan. What about Flair Steamboat or Flair Steam? Either one of those. My God. Flair and Steamboat. You know, the actual rivalry lasted in the late 70s in the NWA Mid-Atlantic Territory, and then WCW in the late 80s with the world title on the line. Both times, those guys were... Flair and the team wrestled 3,000 something times. And each match was great. The three matches on TV in 89 were, to this day, and I agree with the experts, if you want to call them that, the three greatest wrestling matches for world championships in history. Okay. They are they are that freaking awesome. And Flair Sting, I don't think Flair Sting had a bad match except for that last Nitro. And yeah. even then, they're both old. They're both out of shape. What do you want from them, you know? Seriously. I don't think those guys had a bad match. No. Maybe, maybe one on TNA. Even that wasn't as bad as... It wasn't as bad as the one on Nitro. Yeah. Because they actually... They, they both came to play. They really did. They both came... They, they came they, to play. That's why I did that. Um, you know, you want to talk about feuds, you know, you talk about, you know, Hogan and Warrior. Hogan and Savage. Hogan and Andre. Kyo Shea and Thunder Kid. That was an epic feud. Lasted a whole this much. Yeah. Um, but it was a great feud. It was a great feud. <laughs> Dylan and Thunder Kid was a great match. It will lead to more. Adam sure. Pierce and Colt Cabana. Oh yes. It made the NWA World Championship actually matter again. Matter again in my eyes. Until Colt lost it like three weeks later to this year. Who then refused to defend it against and Pierce because he is a puss. Yeah, exactly. Just remember, All the work they did make that belt mean something again. Just, just to have it discredited. Just remember, Sheik, you may have been a diamond in the business as the other champion. Diamond upside down is still a pussy. Okay. Anyway. Oh! Anyway. Wow! Um, I like that. Thank you. That was good. Stolen from DDP and Ready to Rumble. That's right. That still bugs. That really gets in my craw that he did that. Anyway, <sighs> feuds. A feud doesn't get talked about very often, but it is showcased on the latest Stone Cold release. Gentleman Chris Adams versus Stunning, Stunning Steve, Steve Austin. Austin. Student versus feud. Teacher. The wives good. were involved. Yes, yes, yes. Just freaking amazing feud. Yeah. And that was a great feud. Blood feud. You know, th- these guys in Texas, world class, and the USWA just took it all over. Had every kind of match you could think of. And when you talk about Stan Steve Austin in the USWA, you have to talk about his manager, Percy Pringle, who became Paul Bearer. So you talk about feuds with Paul Bearer, Undertaker and Mankind, Undertaker, Undertaker and Kane. Kane. Undertaker and Mankind had one of the greatest rivalries in the WWF that Until again... Kane came around. That, yeah. That again, never got resolved. Yeah. Because the last time they actually had a, like a showcase feature match, Foley had to walk out of there with help. Two people helping him. Yeah. After taking a stretch ride 20 minutes before. Yeah. Undertaker Kane, though, wow. Just amazing. You know, they took this guy who was in WCW as me, Mark Callis, wasn't doing anything, had to get out of the company because WCW sucked, became this phenomenon. Take this other guy. Do, 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 do. Yeah, phenomenon. Do, 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 Thank do. you. And he had this other guy who was playing a dentist and a fo- bogus diesel and a guy called Unibomb. And they give him the gimmick of the Undertaker's brother. And even as er- as late as 2010, we're still feuding. Yep. 
12 year rivalry and partnership. Amazing. Amazing story. They came back just recently, about a month apart from each other. Mm -hmm. And the clock is ticking on when they will interact. Oh, yeah. You know it's oh, yeah. coming. Under and Undertaker has come back to face <laughs> Triple H. Which again. which, again, Undertaker, you know what, honestly, Undertaker versus both of them. Leg up. Huh? Oh, sorry. Undertaker. Put me to there. Honestly, Undertaker versus either one of them, Sean or Hunter. Because Undertaker versus Hunter in 2001, short short build, both, all of them have been short built to their matches at WrestleMania. And then you have the two man power trip versus Brothers of Destruction, which is a great feud in 2001. But, you know, Undertaker, Undertaker versus freaking almost anybody, really. You know, almost, almost anybody. anybody, yeah. You know, um, the McMahons against each other, yeah. especially Shane versus Vince. Yeah. I, I thought that was a great rivalry. I really did. I thought, I thought the invasion could have been done a lot better. Obviously, well, obviously. Um, you've got that one. You've got uh, Chris Jericho versus Stephanie McMahon Helmsley. <laughs> that was great. The dirty, disgusting. Brutal, bottom-feeding, trash bag hoe. That's right. Brutal. Brutal. You had, uh, as far as divas go, you want to talk about the, the women feuds, you have um, Lita versus Trish. Molly versus Victoria. That was a great feud. That led to a life and career altering move for Molly with her head getting shaved. She's grown it back since then. She has grown it back since, thank goodness. But how about how about another hair versus hair ending of a rivalry? Kurt Angle and Edge. I thought that view was tremendous for her, as short as it was. Yeah, that was good. Yep. Edge and Cena. Edge. Oh God, I forget that one. <clears throat> Edge and Cena. Yeah. You know. Not not the hugest Cena fan in the house, but no. the Edge Cena rivalry was awesome. It really truly Edge versus was. Christian. Yes. Could have been a lot more, though. Could have been a lot Angle more. Angle versus Benoit. Yes. Benoit versus Jericho. So many. There's so many feuds in wrestling. You and got I'd even like to put over the fantasy feud that WWE had in their latest magazine. Yes. Bret Hart, in his prime... Versus Brian Danielson. Yes, they say Daniel Bryan, but we don't say that around here. Oh God, I oh. I went online this morning. Oh. And one of the groups that I belong in on Facebook. Let me guess which group. The talk wrestling group, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I know where said, this is going. Said that Brian would not last ten minutes with Bret Hart. And my reply was, Are you serious, bro? Brian Danielson is the best in the world. He is where Punk and Jericho stole yes. that claim from. Yes. The American Dragon, Brian Danielson, or at least the version that wrestled in ROH and, and Gorilla and, and all those other indie feds, yes. would take Bret Hart in his prime to a 60-minute time limit draw. Fans like us on the edge of our seats the entire time clamoring and wondering who's going to get the victory on our feet at the end of the match for a standing ovation, probably chanting, this is awesome, or this is wrestling. Well, the freaking While the rest of, of you see nation retards out there that think that five moves of doom is how you wrestle are chanting, boring, boring, Didn't because they they're not jumping off of ladders yeah. and... You know, using trash cans and thumbtacks and all that type of stuff. Did they do that to Regal and Brian earlier this year in England? Even though it was Regal in their own freaking country? They did it last year at SummerSlam, too, when it was Barrett and Brian. That's right. That's what it was. Barrett and Brian. And I looked at the people around me in my section and said, you must be a John Cena fan. Sure enough, they didn't deny it, I'll bet. Nope. Yep. Ugh. In fact, you know what they did? Of course they did. Idiots. I bet you Brian and Brett would go to an hour overtime and then go another hour. 
quite possibly. Seriously, freaking Ric Flair style. Quite possibly. Brian and Brett would tear the roof off of any venue you put them in. Yes. Anywhere. If you only that match could happen. Can you imagine you put it like in Washington State where people from Canada can come down close enough from like Vancouver and then people from... God! Right? Oh my God! I'd go to that... I'd, I would freaking walk from here to Vancouver to see that match. Right? I would. You people are morons on that talk wrestling group. Whoever created the name talk wrestling group, it, it, I'm... <laughs> whatever. <laughs> anyway... We have gone on and on with all these great feuds, this fantasy feud that has been laid in front of you. What do you guys think? What are your favorite feuds of all time? What did we miss? Because I know we missed a bunch. Oh, yeah. Because remember, these are our opinions. We're exactly. talking about our favorites exactly. and what we think are some of the best. Doesn't mean that everything we've said was the best. No. But they were our favorites, the ones we remember. Yeah. And, and this whole Brian versus Brett thing has really gotten me, got my creative juices flowing here. Yeah. Anyway, what do you guys think out there? Let us know on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, you know, wherever. Let us know what you think, and we will see you guys next time. I'm this Dad's is JJ Williams. I'm Jeff Meacham. We're the dads.